Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me for another episode of Subscriber Designs. And today we have just one thing to look at, but it is a beast. This is a two-stage, um, two-stage to orbit plane sent to me by Arif, and it's rather beautiful. You can see it's pretty laggy right now, and um, we will speed up the footage, but I just wanted to see uh, you to see what kind of frame rates I was working with here. It actually initially drops from these, um, from these, uh, p the launch struts, um, and then takes off. But yeah, anyway, we'll go into four times time Sorry, so you can see what's happening. Now, yes, this is a two-stage to orbit plane, so it has a little carrier plane and the actual shuttle on top. And at first, I was um, you just trying to do this with the jet engines, thinking that I'd fire up the rocket engines later in the... Uh, when I'm higher up, in the, higher up in the atmosphere. That was actually a mistake, because you can see it's really not picking up quite enough speed now. So I guess I will fire them up just before the end of the runway. I think I decided the staging wasn't properly set up um, when it was sent to me. I'm not exactly sure why. Maybe it's just because it was, you know, sent. Um, but yeah, uh, it's it's still pretty awesome. I think there's lots of little nice design uh, features in it. You could see the uh, air intakes I was taking a look at earlier. They're kind of like melded into one. They look really cool. Anyway, we're still not really up to 100 meters per second, so I fire up those... Uh, those uh, vector engines as we take off and it speeds us up a ridiculous amount just in that last bit of the runway it's pretty awesome that's like 9,000 kilonewtons of thrust um, so now we currently have over 9,000 kilonewtons of thrust on this aircraft and we're gonna start going fairly vertically because we have plenty of thrust now it has so much liquid fuel noxidizer in it um, that it can just go right up with the vector engines all firing up, and this is how I think it's supposed to be flown. I mean, it has a very special payload inside that cargo bay as well, which is very part heavy. This currently is, I think, around a thousand, it's over a thousand parts. It's maybe like almost 1100 parts. So the lag was pretty intense, as you can, um, well, as you can't, hopefully can't tell too much now. Um, Mostly because I'm trying not to move the camera too much. But yeah, you can also see that the... Oh, here I'm just going to turn off the um, atmospheric effects because, well, when they start firing up on a big uh, craft like this, it really drops the frame rate. I managed to get about three frames a second with this, um, but if those uh, if, the, if it starts having Mac effects in the flames, it's going to be more like um, seconds per frame, not frames per second, which isn't what you want. But yes, we're going to push it on into orbit now. <laughs> you can see me pausing occasionally. I think I was going away and doing things. It took almost five minutes just to get off the runway. Um, so yeah, that's why there's only this in the uh, episode today. And also because it's so awesome. It's a two-stage to orbit. It's got a freaking space telescope in its cargo bed. I don't think I mentioned that yet, but it's got a space telescope. And then returning it to, uh, returning it to Kerbin is also going to take a little while. So yeah, but for now we must just focus on getting to orbit, which, well, I'm pretty much just going to launch it kind of vertically and slowly flatten out. Oh my god, is that thunder? Sorry if the video is terrible because that's going to be thunder. Um, yeah, stormy in London right now. Anyway, what I was going to say is um, we're going to just sort of flatten out slowly, burn off as much of, well, burn off almost all of the fuel in this uh, lower plane and then detach and carry on into orbit, letting this uh, a kind of lower plane tumble into the atmosphere. I don't think it has a probe on it, so I couldn't return it, but I guess in an ideal world and maybe with yeah, actually, no, I think it, if it had, just if it had a probe on it, maybe I could have attempted uh, to return it to the launch site so this would be fully reusable, um, but it doesn't have one. But because of uh, the kind of length of our trajectory, I think it actually uh, there would be enough time for me to get into orbit and then switch back to the plane and land it. So maybe another time I'll try that, although this took about an hour to record, so maybe not. Um, now I'm just kind of waiting for the um, rapier engines to switch over automatically. The ramjets flame out and these slowly kind of tick down. And you can see we are taking on some heating there. There's just no flames because lag. Um, but yeah, I couldn't remember the action group to switch over these engines. I'm not even sure if there was one. So I'm just kind of waiting for them to switch over. And there they go. Now we have a ridiculous amount of thrust. And we're going to be able to raise our apoapsis out of, um, out of the atmosphere and also extend our orbit outward so that the uh, orbiter itself doesn't have to do too much. Uh, well, to, it doesn't have to fire its engines for too long. Um, it does have two sets of engines, actually, the vectors for getting to, into orbit and then a couple of poodles for an orbital maneuvering system. I really do like this. It's got a lot of nice little details on it. There are some things that are a little janky, but because it's so big, that's kind of to be expected, and it's just amazing. But anyway, we're on a good trajectory now, so we're going to ditch the plane. It's got a bunch of solid rocket boosters in it, which fling it away, which also kind of 
kind of burn up the spacecraft a little bit. It does survive, but it did take a little bit of heating from that. But that's really nice. That was using those little tiny, um, I think they're called like ant boosters. I've forgotten their name, but the little tiny solar rocket boosters, and it brings it away, tumbling back into the atmosphere, looking rather nice, and that'll crash into the ocean somewhere. Uh, might actually even land somewhere in Cathenia. Um, <laughs> if you haven't watched Fall of Kerbin, that means nothing, but uh, there's a series I do with another guy and we, with uh, the Beardy Penguin, and um, and yeah, we've got like a bunch of country names. We should really release the map of the full country list. I'm not sure if we've done that yet. Anyway, enough of talking about other videos. Let's focus on this one. We're at our, we're almost at our apoapsis now, so we're going to fire up those uh, vector engines and push on into orbit. It will take a little while because this is a really big orbiter. It's a really nice looking space shuttle. I like this especially. Um, as uh, by itself alone, you could probably attach this to a kind of more sh space shuttle-like setup, and it would look really cool. But uh, for now, we're just gonna treat it as it is and push on into orbit with those vector engines. I don't think I used the poodle engines at all, um, because I don't maneuver it into anything. But that will be—that is really cool that it has like other maneuvering systems as well. One flaw I did notice is it doesn't have any power generation. Um, kind of outside the spacecraft so it does it will run out of electric charge which is a little annoying especially on re-entry but uh yeah you know it survived it was fine so yeah you can get a nice look at that really big custom wing service down there which is so awesome but right now we're taking a look at this space telescope it is not assembled yet i kind of expected that it would be um and then uh, then it wasn't so i have to build this but that's pretty cool um so yes this brings this beautiful uh, stock space telescope to uh, to orbit so we detach this uh, the telescope bit and that drifts off and um, we're gonna have to get that big solar panel which i guess goes on the back like um what's that it, one of those uh telescopes that i think looks for asteroids i think it looks a lot like that anyway this won't quite come out of the cargo bay um and I'm also not sure how any of this maneuvers at this current time, because there's also a propulsion system there, which uh, is also kind of unmaneuverable. But then I realized there's four little modules down there, and those, those are little, uh, th those aren't pr um, probes. You actually put a Kerbal in there, and they, um, <laughs> you can see I fling it off, and then it won't control itself. I realized there's a seat. So you put a Kerbal in there, and then the Kerbal drives around and docks this together. Sadly, I only brought one Kerbal, so we're going to have to use our uh, main pilot for this. So we get him out of the spacecraft, Get him flying over to the cargo bay. He's going to get in one of these little RCS tugs and start assembling this space telescope. It's only three parts. It's the space telescope I've already de uh, decoupled. It's this little propulsion system and that big solar panel. So we're going to start with the propulsion system because that should be fairly easy. So we do a little bit of maneuvering in, grab it there. I'm thinking just using one of these uh, maneuvering pods will be fine for this. You could attach another one to that other node, but I didn't think it was massively necessary. There are four, so you could use two of them for each um, for each little craft, but for now I think I'll just use one. So, we maneuver it over, just get this to behind the telescope. I guess this would maybe push it out into solar orbit where it could look for asteroids maybe. There wasn't any information about what the uh, telescope did, in, well, it's intended for in the um, email. Obviously it doesn't actually do anything because it's uh, stock, but it does look really nice. I mean, these uh, radiators actually make a pretty good shroud for the telescope. Anyway, we get this docked on with a fairly minimal uh, <laughs> Fairly minimal trouble, which was quite nice. Um, so now we're just going to go and head back in this little RCS tug. Probably just going to use the same one to grab that big solar panel module. And luckily, it seems to have dislodged itself from the um, from the shuttle, which is good because it was a bit kind of lodged in there. So I guess we're going to dock this to uh, that end of the solar panel. Then I am going to go and get another little RCS tug to um, uh, to dock to the other end because it's quite a big uh, well, quite a big module, and I need to maneuver it fairly precisely. Um, but yeah, this was really cool. I just, I, I, the email was just talking about a uh, two stage to orbit. So I was like, ah, oh, that's so awesome. And then I looked at it, I was like, whoa, that's such an awesome plane. Then I looked inside the cargo bay, I was like, oh my god, there's a space telescope in here. This was really awesome. Um, and I did really like to see it. I had a video planned with uh, more craft in it, but I thought this was just cool enough that it deserved its, its own episode because space telescopes and two stage to orbit planes and all of that fun stuff. I'm a, I'm a big fan. Anyway, so, um, Let's just attach this on there now and maneuver the final part over to the space telescope. It shouldn't be too difficult. It does dock laterally, but uh, I've, I've been playing this game for a while, so I can do slightly awkward dockings if I have to. Um, yeah, that's that's a nice thing is when you've been playing Curl the Space Program for a while, you can do some pretty crazy maneuvers. Like uh, I was watching a video I did a while ago where I was flying like, flying like this giant Boeing 747. 
Um, and then, <laughs> and then I then the one of the wheels won't open at the front, and I managed to land it, and it was like, ah, oh, yeah, that was fun. Um, it's just, yeah, just when you play in KSP, think of the dumbest thing you can do and do it, and it'll make you a better player. Anyway, um, <laughs> we've maneuvered over now, it's just a matter of getting into a, hopefully a decent position. I mean, it will be hard to get it properly aligned, because although I am fairly good at docking, I'm not super great at doing things precisely. Um, so, yeah, and it also spins around quite a lot, and it actually can't touch the docking port because of this module. So I had to couple that, and it's twisted a little bit. But, uh, yeah, so it looks a little janky, and I, I didn't uh, end up re, uh, realigning it. But I am going to um, turn that solar panel towards the sun, because it will also act as a uh, kind of almost a... Not a heat shield, but yeah, kind of a heat shield to keep the, uh, um, the telescope cool. Um, so yeah, that's constructed. We've got ourselves a beautiful little te telescope over there. That was really cool. I love how it looks, and uh, I would have sent it out into um, into a solar orbit if I'd... I, I, I don't know why I didn't. I thought it would be maybe be unbalanced, or maybe I shouldn't have time. Um, but yeah, for, so now we're going to get into this little module over here, because that's the only one with the door we can access. And we're going to head home. We've built ourselves a telescope. It looks rather nice. I mean, my construction of it made it look a little janky, but... Uh, not bad overall, I'm uh, still pretty impressed with that. Now we have the task of bringing this plane home, which uh, can be difficult, especially with planes you're not familiar with, um, which I'm not. I've never, this is my first flight of this plane. Um, I didn't really want to do a second one, given that it took uh, kind of like 25 minutes to get to orbit. <laughs> but yeah, so we do our deorbit burn, get ourselves a line, so we should hopefully arrive somewhere near the KFC. Um, either that or overshoot it, and it's fine to overshoot things because then you'll have excess energy and you can return to the launch site using that energy. Unless you like overshoot it by half the planet, then you're probably screwed. Quickly turn the um, re-entry effects back on because it'll look rather beautiful. And angle myself up at about 45 degrees because it's very important to burn off as much speed in the high in the high atmosphere as possible. However, this uh, craft has a serious tendency to pitch forward at um, high high aerodynamic profiles, um, which is a problem. So I'm going to start pumping fuel back because we need to maintain a high angle of attack or there's a serious uh, chance that we'll burn up. And you can see as this kind of continues, I have to keep using RCS and keep fighting it to keep it pointing it, point, <clears throat> keep pointing it the right way. So this was a very hands-on re-entry. And a little later when we're burning up, you can see it's really squirreling around quite a lot. I'm pumping fuel into all of the back tanks just to try and push that center of mass backwards so that uh, it'll, you know, so that the center of lift will kind of angle our spacecraft up, but uh, it is being rather troublesome. Um, but eventually I do get it fairly under control, but I'm going to overshoot the KSC quite a lot, so I go for a slightly different, more aggressive tactic, go inverted and start pulling an inverted dive, because we kind of don't want to overshoot the KSC too much, because we might not be able to get back, because we don't have jet engines. Um, these vector engines will work in the atmosphere, but they will be quite limited. Um, but yeah, we do pull ourselves down. We're taking some pretty serious heating. This is a pretty dumb way to do a re-entry. I had burned off just enough velocity that it wasn't totally crazy. But when you're doing this, you're pushing yourselves down into the atmosphere, which means the uh, heating will be more intense, so it is a little dangerous for the spacecraft. But it does go okay. But then talking of dangerous for the spacecraft, we start to go into a spin. Apparently all of my fuel pumping made it unstable at uh, lower, uh, lower speeds, whereas it was kind of more stable at higher speeds, and we start to spin. So I need to start pumping fuel and start trying to gain a control of this aircraft because we are falling quite quickly towards the ocean. You can see I'm occasionally firing up those vector engines, trying to force myself kind of downward to uh, force my prograde marker forward and it does start to work and the fuel pumping and everything brings it under control I just managed to gain control of this, the aircraft and we start pumping fuel again backwards so that it's a little less stable um, so that we can pitch up before we slam into the ocean and we do so there we go the craft is looking good and now it's actually flying pretty nicely it doesn't transition well between um, various kind of aerodynamic profiles, but once you're at low speeds, it flies pretty nicely. You can see it's doing a pretty good job. Um, but yeah, it is quite difficult to get a plane to be, a big, like a big plane like this, to be uh, very stable on re-entry and also then stable when flying at low speeds. It's just how aerodynamics works. And I mean, Kerbal Space Program doesn't model it perfectly, um, but it has, it, I mean, it's much better than it was when I first started playing, where it was all kind of the same. But anyway, uh, after all of that, we are coming in for a landing now. Um, after flying a little bit with those vector engines to get us to the uh, runway, we're just going to glide in and hopefully burn off enough velocity that we don't, well, crash. 
Um, there is a parachute down there, though, which I, well, at the back of the spacecraft there, though, which I'll probably use because um, it's always cool to land with the with the parachute, and also I am going very fast. Um, uh, there's no air brakes on this, uh, although there are some. Uh, uh, you can deploy the flaps. However, I think I screw that up a little bit because I think they auto they auto deploy when you hit brake, um, but I don't think I knew that, so I start manually deploying things and it starts kind of losing a little control which you'll see see in a second um, but right now we're just lining up with the runway trying to get fairly level so that i can flare at the last second uh, you can see i am just deploying them but it means that i'm pitching forward which is not what you want while landing so i undeploy them i'm going quite quickly uh, we do a bit of a flare but then i just pop the chute which you don't really want to do while you're still in the air but it's placed pretty nicely so it works pretty well and now I'm just trying to maintain a fairly good level of pitch and we touch down and the plane actually does have a wheel on the front just in case you touch down a little too nose heavy which is a really nice little design a nice little design addition I guess and yeah we fire up the brakes and we slow down and we reach a stop on the runway rather beautifully a bit of a uh, bit of a turgid re-entry but it was a bit of fun you know trying to keep it under control especially when it went into that flat spin i like doing stuff like that it makes me feel like i know what i'm doing but yeah anyway there we are on the runway all done so thank you to arif for this i'm sorry it was just one craft today but i was just this was so cool that i thought it was more than enough but yeah, uh, the next episode of Subscriber Designs will of course be the Fighter Jet Showdown finale in which we put all of the winners of every Fighter Jet Showdown up against each other to have the Clash of Titans and I think it will be amazing. So I hope you will come back and join me for that and then we'll just be resuming normal Subscriber Design. So uh, yeah, nothing really to send in for next week's uh, episode but the week after that there'll be another normal Subscriber Design. So go crazy! But anyway, if you want to go check out a couple more videos now, there is my most recent episode of Road to Colonization in which we arrive at Duna. There's also my most recent episode of Prison Architect in which I try to make a logging camp. There's also links to my Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon in the description if you're interested. But as always, I hope you've enjoyed this. I'll see you next time.